I'd like to welcome everyone to the EMA's Coral Council meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this time we'll have personal appeals part one. If you have a personal appeal, please approach the podium, state your name, and then uh, you have five minutes for your appeal. Anybody here? And then if you get a chance, make sure you sign in also. And we'll give some to their lead. <laughs> Not our money. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Lost it. Good thing we got later, dude. You didn't hit him. <laughs> he put his eye on. Oh, my That's God. So <laughs> I think I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And others. I just wanted to come and address Pro Council this evening. Thank you all for your support and patience during drafting of those changes to the roads. Any emergencies and certainly appreciate the patience and support during this project. It's been an extensive and thoughtful process. Various stakeholders participating, including some of the council. Um, I just want to quickly, as you have been looking through this and continue to contemplate some of the rationale, what went into uh, all of the documents. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the documents were inclusive of all the needs and economic situations of residents and businesses in the community. We be fair and reasonable in order to continue investment in the borough and to attract new residents. And we wanted to be cognizant of the borough council and staff requests. Certainly, of the code enforcement's uh, responsibility for enforcing whatever is holding uh, active. We also want to be consistent with the Southwest Lehigh Comp Plan, the Valley Planning Commission, and its uh, vision. You know, from attending a few weeks ago, there are some concerns. I think those are being addressed by the Stephanie staff solicitor. Um, I believe some of them were parking, which I think we're modifying at this point. And also uh, apartments. I just want to let you know that any of the districts that receive information on apartments are no different than current zoning in South. Not exclude or include different. However, some of the boundaries have changed to be a little more inclusive of some area. You know, that if you're looking at that, keep that in mind. Um, and also, I think we're working on concerns of manufacturing. Definition So I thank you for your patience. Uh, any questions I'll feel at this time? If not, look forward to the passage. Mike, I read your comments in, a, in the letter that you sent to the borough council, and uh, I agree everything that you wrote in there, uh, especially the parking issue. So thank you for uh, your comments. Thank you. Good evening. State your name for the record and where you live, please. I am. Thank you. Please try to speak into the mic. Yeah, I'm a public What is Twenty-five miles to be still on fifty six. My concern is that slow people down. 
Steve Cummings movie. They're yeah. coming out of the bars. Same. On the Steve motorcycle, Steve. they're ripping at it. Two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm sleeping. I'm hearing the people ripping at it. This doesn't make sense. Very Steve, bro. Um, thank you for your uh, pointing that out. And uh, Madam Mayor is in charge of the police department. I'm sure she'll relay that to the chief and uh, maybe we'll pay a little more attention to that. And it's kind of unfortunate because uh, the reason we put those uh, barriers was to slow and calm traffic down is it doesn't seem like it's working. But, you know, I, I don't think it's just your neighborhood. I think it's just in in general people's speed in towns. I mean, it's just the way it is, unfortunately. And Mr. Cruz, just so you're, just so you're aware. That is a state road, so we're not allowed to install speed bumps there without uh, PennDOT permission, and that can take some time. Okay? That's a concern. Yep. Oh, no, but we just wanted to explain to you why it wasn't done already. Thank you. And if you get a chance, make sure you sign in to the uh, – there should be a sign-in sheet there. Are there any other public appeals this evening? Are there any on – oh, we do. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Matthew Spangberg. I live in Rome, but I have a lot of properties on North Main Street. Um, my partners and I have over 65 properties in the borough. Uh, we have 121 units. We have rental properties and five properties with some other credit. So I have a lot invested in the firm. I'm nice. Good here when I got married. So I'm uh, I was I'm off to a contractor to uh, renovation. So I have a very unique perspective as a contractor, master, developer. So I have a great uh, well for a mess. I was on the 2030 vision. Fixed in here. Chad, but we had a lot to say about what you see in this. So I just wanted to put out there those are a lot of uh, uh, there's some discussions on some of the changes in this ordinance, and I went through thing pretty thorough on it. Uh, I would like to offer my expertise, opinions, if you like me in the future when we have meetings about some changes. Uh, just as my opinions are best with contract developer. Some of the loopholes I've seen in the proposed ordinance, some of the ways people like me can think about creative ideas and get on certain things, um, hit them head on before they happen. Also, the opinion on the parking, possibly changing. I see some problems with the ready ordinance. I think it's very good to propose. If that changes with the parking issues, then it will restrict a lot of development and repurposing. So, I believe it's what we're always trying to get. So I just want to put that out there. Thank you. Anyone else here that would like to make a public appeal? Thank you for signing in. Unfortunately, uh, staying there could take like <laughs> weeks meeting. If you could just state your name, I'm at 520 Dirt Street. Yes, thank you. Uh, I couldn't make last week's meeting on the zoning, but I did review the watch the minutes, watch the video, follows it. And I didn't want this council to be uh misled or misguided by a couple of statements that we made. The uh New zoning changes were represented uh, as it says the residential districts align with the new residential districts. That is false. They're all new. 
it said they said the uh, proposed boundaries. I'm sorry, the proposed map maintains a, minor, a majority of portions of the current RL and RW that are now becoming RW, uh, UCN, and RC. Major changes are happening to the RL RM district. Even looking at the zoning, as it was explained to the council last week, I uh, should say districts were going from the less density to the higher density. Well, down on the line was the UCN. Start with those names, they're still trying to catch on to me. But the UCN was actually a more dense zone than the urban edge neighborhood. Yet, much of our residential medium density districts will now fall under UCN. When uh, Solicitor Ulrich asked about if there was a comparison, she couldn't give one because none has been made. A completely new one, but I think you deserve a comparison. I think our neighbors deserve a comparison. You don't get red lines and changes that were made. Very difficult to review. And the red line from past to present. I reviewed it again today, took several hours to see if changes that were made by the borough last week were in the new zone and they were not. The zoning map is not available. It was the official map, not the zoning map. The neighbors are neighbors can even review if they wish to. I am against the changes to the RLs or in the district. I think they do not do what they said, which was they said the uh, or be, they said we'd be maintaining and enhancing the character of the residential districts of the borough. I think the new proposed zoning does neither. I am prepared to give the council, which are free to post, a partial comparison that I had made and made available to rather uh, several committee members. I will say the Zoning Planning Commission uh, was divided on the proposed changes. We wish to move it to Borough Council to get some decision and direction for a divided planning commission. I ask you to read it or ask my advice. I'm free to give it. I have not reviewed everything. We have the uh, uh, Matt's advice here. I think we should take. We should solicit more input. This will reflect on future of a mass. As presented at last meeting, where we could put a trailer, I didn't review if that was true or not, at 125 for Country Avenue. This accessory dwelling units that are popped into our code, I think, can have major negative effects. I have a sheet here of permitted uses that were not permitted before. The statement was made to you last week that residential, residential uses are in residential zones and that no commercial uses are in those zones. That statement was false. So I ask you to read it, talk to me, talk to other people that might have some advice for you, but don't vote on something you don't understand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I may not, I may be speaking out of order here, but I think it, our intention is not to take action tonight. It has mm -hmm. been tabled and, and we're going to, I guess, well, keep it. That's up to you guys. That's right. not, I, I mean, that's it hasn't been, it's not, but, so it uh, hasn't uh, actually been decided, but right. I I'm, I'm saying that was my intent, my intention, but also with that being said, with the changes that are being made, I'm going to recommend or support having another hearing. So, uh, like, like the solicitor said, we'll have to decide that as a council. So thank you for your input. Anyone else with a public appeal tonight in this room? All right, anyone? We'll have our virtual guest unmuted. And uh, do we have a, an appeal from Zoom? Hearing none? Did you ask her to mm -hmm. Here and then we'll move to community minute. Does anyone have a community minute to bring forward? Yes, Mr. President. So November 25th, Saturday, this coming Saturday, the Saturday after Thanksgiving is Small Business Saturday. And if anyone is participating, uh, you can pick up a free 
wag bag between 10 and 2 at Better yeah. Homes and Gardens Valley Real Estate. Um, there's lots of things going on in town. Um, we've got um, discounts and specials happening um, all around um, all around today. So hopefully um, shop anything local this holiday season. Thanks. Mr. President, I just wanted to uh, say congratulations to the Canvas High School field hockey team for winning their, I believe, 15th state title this past week. Um, uh, they had a nice little break through town, uh, well deserved. The ladies did awesome, and uh, just congratulations to that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? You want anyone? Yeah, yeah, old fashioned Christmas. You want to? Oh, okay. Yeah, because some no, people are in the council meeting, correct? Yeah. So old fashioned Christmas. Um, and actually, Hayden is on. It would be nice if um, she actually gave us a little bit of an overview of the update of what's happening uh, for old fashioned Christmas. Hayden? Good evening, everyone. I would be happy to give an update. Old Fashioned Christmas is going to be next Saturday, the 2nd. Um, the festivities are starting with the Cheers Trail from 12 to 5. Um, that is going to be a really fun event. We have the most uh, businesses involved that we've had to split it into two trails this year. Um, so we have over 30 businesses involved getting people in their stores to ship, sip, shop, and stroll, um, kick off the holiday season. And then for the kids, we will also have Candy Cane Lane from 12 to 4. Uh, but the Borough Hall uh, will be one of the stops along with the library, Canals Homestead, and the Historical Society. All of them will be offering a kids craft um, or an ornament that the they, kids can then bring the ornament to the triangle at 4 o'clock to hang on the kids tree. Uh, we're partnering with the Emmaus Theater for a free movie showing. We just ask that all uh, participants bring a canned food item to donate to a local food pantry. We'll be showcasing The Grinch, the 2018 animated version. And then 4 o'clock is when the Triangle Festivities kick off. So we are busting at the seams, have a wait list of local nonprofits that are coming and setting up, offering different activities for the community. Um, we're going to have reindeer, we're going to have live performances, um, we're going to have an ice carver, so lots of amazing things, really excited to bring the community again uh, to kick off the holiday season. The tree lighting will uh, be at 6.30 this year, um, so we invite everyone to come out and enjoy a really great evening um, as we kick off the holiday season. Thank you, Hayden. Anybody else with the community minute? So. Uh House. At, at the same time, uh, we are having our ribbon cutting and open house, um, and Sarah has been planning that event for us. Uh, ribbon cutting is going to be at 3 p.m., uh, and then the open house will be from 3 to 6. Uh, and then on December 9th will be the ribbon cutting and open house for Central Station. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, uh, this isn't really community minute, but I want to do it now versus my uh, president's business uh, um, so that I can recognize Shane in front of more people. Uh, Shane received a letter October 25th stating he received a credentialed manager designation from the International City County Management Association. Uh, Shane is one out, out of over 1,300 local government management professionals currently credentialed throughout or through this program. To receive this prestigious credential, Shane had to have significant experience as a senior management executive in local government. He earned a degree in public administration, demonstrated a commitment to high standards of integrity and to lifelong learning and professional development. He has 17 years of professional local uh, executive experience in government, uh, almost six years in Berwick, and about 11 in Emmaus. And he makes Significant contributions to many organizations. He serves on the APMM membership committee, and you have to tell me what that one is because I don't know what that is. Uh, the Association for Pennsylvania Municipal Managers. Thank you. Uh, he's also treasurer of the Susquehanna Municipal Insurance Trust. He's the chairman of the Lehigh County Tax Collection Committee. He's a founding member of the East Penn Neighbors Helping Neighbors here in, in the borough. And of course, he's a volunteer baseball coach. Uh, Shane continues his credentials to contribute 
to his community through higher education. He holds a he holds an MBA, earned his, you're gonna have to tell me what this is too, SHRM CP certification. Uh Society for Human Resource Management. It's an international certification. Thank you. He obtained his Pennsylvania certified borough official certification and he recently got his Pennsylvania building code official certification. So Shane, on behalf of the borough council, I'd like to thank you uh, for your commitment to this borough and community and congratulate, congratulate you on your designated credential, uh, well, credential designation, I guess is the right way of saying it. But it is a high standard to meet this credential from what I understand. And I believe when Shane did this, he was the only one or maybe one of two in the whole Northeast that got this. Am I correct on that? Correct. So we are very lucky to have Shane and, and all that he does for us. So I just wanted to say that now. So Thank you. With that, I would like to turn it over to uh, Liesl for the LCA sewer presentation, something very exciting. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, but sounds okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, this is one of 15 municipal presentations that I will be doing over the next couple of months, but it's the only one where I can say, not only presenting to you as part of the High County Authority, I'm also a resident. So this presentation is near and dear to me for a couple of reasons, um, affecting my hometown as well as uh, the work. So um, today, I know you have a packed agenda, so I'm going to try to go through a lot of material rather quickly. And I just want to preface that by saying that if you'd like to hear more than willing to come back, and I think you will be asking to come back. Well, we have that's coming today. So, um, I'm looking to you to advance for yep. Thank you very much. So, the, the Pennsylvania <laughs> Island sewer system is what I'm talking about tonight. And um, you'll note it on the screen there are 15 municipalities listed. Those are all the municipalities where that are interconnected to the sewer system that flows to the city. One thing that is missing from the list. Uh, is a Lehigh County authority or any other And that, there's a reason for that. The Regional uh, Sewage Facilities Plan, or an Act 537 plan, is by its very nature a municipal plan. So every single municipality that's connected is responsible for having an Act 537 plan and will need to um, take some action to adopt or otherwise act on the plan. Lehigh County Authority. It's a municipal authority. We're trying to facilitate the process, but it really is your plan, every municipal. Um, on the next slide, we see a map of the service area, so you can get a sense of what that 15 municipal um, service area looks like. So the, the area that's shaded in that light, you know, light yellow color is the full service area. Every community in or every property inside that um, shaded area goes to Allentown for treatment. And when you put it all together, there are about 270,000 people that receive sewer service from the Flying Island sewer, uh, sewer system. And we're treating about 32 million gallons of this water every single day. The S is one very important thing of that, but it is part of a broader. So um, what, we're, what we're working on with the um, with the regional plan on the next slide uh, is to address some major system challenges. And I believe the borough is well aware of what some of these challenges are. You may have discussed them at some of your prior meetings, but I want to go through them um, in just a little bit of detail. So first of all, aging infrastructure, that is the mantra that you're hearing across the country um, regarding the, the age of our, our roads, our bridges, um, all kinds of infrastructure. But we don't always think about the buried infrastructure. That's what we can't see. Um, here in Lehigh County, the community sewer systems are between 50 and 100 years old, and that's pretty darn old. Um, that is causing some problems with the system, allowing rainwater to leak into those sewer pipes. 
you think of a water system, uh, when there's a water main break, the water comes up to the street or creates a sinkhole or all kinds of problems that you can see. It's the exact opposite for a sewer system. When there's a, a crack in the pipe or joints are breaking or a collapsed pipe, the, the impact is water leaks into the pipe and creates an overload. So that's why we have overflows, sewage backups in basements, and we also have plant bypasses at the plant. So along with that major issue of aging infrastructure, we also have components that are sized um, too small for today's flows. So major sewer lines and some components that can't handle the amount of flows going today. That just makes the problem worse. When rainwater is getting into a system that's already full, we have more overflows. That creates a problem related to capacity uh, connections. There are some communities that are still growing and um, having the capacity for that, for that growth, um, as well as the regulatory oversight. If the overflows and the challenge, it certainly created a scenario where uh, we're under a lot of scrutiny by federal government as well as more recently the state. So, I, and I just want to mention before we move, move on, and on the aging infrastructure piece, I'm going to talk a lot about some large regional projects. But really, when it comes down to it, we're really talking about the um, the municipal systems and what each community is doing in terms of addressing that. There's over um, almost a thousand miles of sewer line buried around that service area. The vast majority of that is municipal. Inflow and infiltration. Have we had a a primer on on this topic? I Beat it into them. Okay, great. So I, I don't I don't think they need the 101, but the, the, the audience might. Though. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so there's this thing that we call inflow and infiltration, and that is um, what I mentioned before about rainwater getting into the system, and we kind of um, break it into two different parts. So inflow is rainwater that's coming in at a very high rate during the, the storm. So imagine a parking lot with a manhole. Um, that's kind of sunken in a little bit and the water just collects on top of that mantle and the water is directly going into that mantle. That's the flow. Uh, we have a hydraulic model that shows about 160 million gallons of water per day trying to get into the system during these events. That's huge. Um, the treatment plant in Allentown can only treat about half that long. So obviously that means it's going somewhere. It's trying to get in the system can't be, yeah, can't be treated, it's coming out of places. And then infiltration is a, a, a little bit different, and that's where uh, rainwater or groundwater is getting into the pipe on a day-to-day a -day basis. Even on a dry day like today, we have about 10 million gallons of water every single day getting into the pipe and flowing down the street. And that just takes up capacity out of the system and um, creates but those are the two problems we're trying to address. I'm going to talk quite a bit about regional components of the plan, why we need a regional plan, and I just want to be clear what I mean when I say regional. I do not mean that all 15 municipalities have to do it the same way, um, or that there's one solution that's going to fix everything for every municipality. What I do mean is that the systems are interrelated, interdependent, and connected, and so the plan has to be well coordinated, and really trying to get the best value for the investment across the region, whether it's in the work on municipal systems or the regional. And I want to mention the county authorities' role, what we're here for. Um, I mentioned at the the very first slide that you're not listed, you're not going to be approving this plan. It really is a municipal plan. But we have an important role to play, and the reason I personally am here presenting this to you is because the Lehigh County Authority manages the regional of the system. So we have large sewer interceptors, treatment plants, and pump stations that all communities use, and those regional components are what I tell them. We're working very closely with all the municipalities, and our focus is on facilitating the planning effort so that we meet the 
and helping each municipality that needs. But this is not our plan. Um, it is your plan, it is the region's plan, and um, well, the Kent County Authority's approval is not required. The UP is going to be looking for municipalities to approve this law. Okay. So getting into some regulatory action, um, I want to just give a very brief history lesson that goes back to 2007. Um, in 2007, she was against the region because of the opioids that were happening. So it's been recognized for a very long time that we've had this problem and this challenge. Um, and it's taken some time for the communities to coalesce and to work, to, work together on uh, more comprehensive solutions. Lots of work has been done over this time period, but we've really gotten to the point only more recently that we understand a regional problem. So one of the things that kind of helped us get there was a very wet period during 2018 and 2019. I happen to know that, and I can say this because I'm a rural resident, my basement flooded seven times during the 12-month period. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't a sewer problem. It was just a really, really wet year. And um, that wet period of time actually created a hydraulic overload that finds out of the so we exceeded the permit, which is um, 40 million gallons per day. We exceeded that permit a level and um, found ourselves out of the EPA administrative order, but under a corrective action plan. So it, from, since 2019, when that happened, we've been really much more focused on meeting the GEP requirements and addressing some very specific things that are in the one of those is to develop the act by seven by certain. But that's kind of a quick story of how we got to where we are. Um, on the next one, just going to talk briefly about what the expectations are for this Act 537 plan. First of all, um, the plan under the DEP Corrective Action Plan, we need to submit the Act 537 to by March of Seems like a little ways out, but there's a lot of work that still has to be done. A lot of work has been done. DEP is looking for a 10-year period. So I'm going to talk tonight briefly about projects that can go out in 2025. Plan must include details on how each municipality will address the issue to the system. So um, that the, the borough has submitted a plan. Each of the 15 municipalities have already developed a sewer recap plan. That has to be in the overall Act 57 plan. And then the projects to address the regional needs have to be sized and, and designed to meet um, the needs of, of the systems. Another really important component is addressing the long term needs. So this has already work already been done. Each municipality needs to submit details on expected projections. So again, LCA is not planning for growth. We're taking growth figures that came from each municipality, building that into the design projects. And then we're going to talk about some big numbers tonight. Very important that we also have a presentation plan, financing plan, and projections. I do not have those for you today. I have the big numbers for the hand. So. I'm going too fast. Any point you want to stop the questions? I'm just going to keep going as I see. So um, what happens if we don't take action? Really, I look at this in, in two ways. For, on one hand, the overflows aren't going to fix themselves. The aging of the fix themselves. Fix itself. So, if you don't take action, those problems will just get worse and um, likely more expensive to fix. On the other hand, the regulatory side, um, the regulatory actions that could happen, uh, talking about consent fines or outright bans on actions, those are some pretty harsh consequences that we would uh, potentially face if we can't fix together in a way that satisfies.
Okay, so getting into the planning approach, for the past four years, um, Shane will back me up on this, we have been meeting every month for the past four years with the municipal manager here to work on this plan. And we've come a long way. We developed a regional flow monitoring program and a hydraulic model. And then the three things that are outlined in yellow, those are really where the municipal inputs have come into play. So that regional flow monitoring created um, data that came to all the municipalities about four systems leakage, where it's coming from, how much uh, the system is leaking. And then the municipalities use that um, data to develop the sewer refund programs that were then submitted to us for corporation as required. And then that middle one about municipal growth projections, we have that for all of the municipalities. So we take all this information, put it into the, um, put it to the engineers to work on the solutions, uh, do the engineering analysis, and develop processes. That's, that's where we are today. So I'm going to talk to you about um, a few of the key projects at a high level, what we're expecting to include in the plan on the digital So first is at the Plants Island Wastewater Treatment Plant. I mentioned earlier about how um, on a, during a peak rain event, about 160 million gallons per day of water is trying to pump its way through the plant. So to address that, we have some standard pumping projects as well as some treatment um, upgrades that we need to happen so that we can manage more of the flows that are coming. Also, because this plan must be comprehensive in nature, we're also um, incorporating all the regular repair replacement type projects that are, that are expected over the next time. So I have some cost estimates on each slide. I'll show you some of it. The next one relates to the industrial pre-treatment plant that's located um, out in Vogelsville. That plant is a really important regional facility that we don't talk too often about, but uh, what it does or the function that it has is to address the high strength waste coming from the large industries located out in Western And um, it has a, a really important economic benefit to the region. Um, and it also has the benefit of lowering the strength of the waste that's So the wastewater plant in Allen doesn't work as hard as it would otherwise. So there are some synergies between the two. However, this plant is also overloaded and aging. And we have a very, very high number shown on this screen. But I want to say for the $267 million that's shown, shown here, there's a lot of good engineering work that's going on right now. It's still very much of a, um, a a very high process. Another piece to be aware of is that the industries that use this facility are deepening the conversation about what's going to happen, um, including engineering options and other. So we have their support in training. There's a, a pipe, we call it an interceptor, a large pipe that runs through Allentown called the interceptor. That interceptor has been overloaded since the 1980s. There have been relief facilities um, constructed a, a couple different ways. Um, we still have not solved the problem. So as part of this plan, we would expect to construct a second large interceptor um, up to 72 inches di in diameter to address today's flows. And The Little Lehigh Interceptor, same uh, concept. This is a, a pipeline that was put in a long time ago and is overloaded today. We have relief facilities in place in the 1990s and the flows that are going. Right. So in both of these situations, both interceptors, they're running parallel to the and Little Lehigh Creek is a really important natural resource for Lehigh Creek. Also, it is a primary source of for about 200,000. So protecting that resource is critical to work. Um, pardon me. So the, um, the new interceptor project is um, is planned for Western Ohio. There are some other options we're looking at in terms of where we construct the 
facilities, whether it's next to the creek in the floodplain, um, take use of the gravity that would allow water to flow by gravity to Allen County, or potentially some options, but we're not going to get into those details. On this map, you'll see the white blue lines that are shown um, kind of running the, through the map. Those light blue lines are just there. The Little high interceptor, that's the one that's closest to five mile blue sort of treatment plant. And then the western high interceptor is the one that sort of zigs at. Looks like it's going through the lower region. So that's just the lower region. <laughs> and then this map I like to show just because all those big black lines, the big interceptors, they look like a lot. But when you look at the thousand miles of pipe that's located throughout the communities, that's a much bigger um, asset and a much bigger challenge. So there are projects that the municipalities are going to do that are, included, are going to be included in the plan. Um, each municipality has already provided the expected work plan for sewer rehab, and um, results of that work will address uh, the current time period, but will also do some flow monitoring to understand. It. So, if we're successful as a region in getting leakage out of the system, future projects could potentially, um, and we're, we're going to plan or incorporate into the schedule. Um, check point 20. I do want to mention or pause here, say the $90 million that's listed here, that those are not LCA's numbers. Those are actually the numbers of the um, compiled programs from each of the 15 municipalities. And in whatever form we got them to municipality, we put it all together and say collectively municipalities are just significant. And then the last component are some other projects. So each municipality or some of the municipalities have some interceptors, which are just larger trunk lines. And um, those interceptors may be overflowing now during wet weather or they're going to be flowing in the future. And so uh, there's a process going on right now with projects to determine what needs to be. So all together, I believe um, you've probably seen the headlines already with that big number, the $600 million worth of work on the sewer plan over the next 10 years. I uh, wanted to, to give you the breakdown and help you to understand what makes up that number. So you can see the top portion are those four main regional plans that um, together will be about $400. And then the municipal components, which Managed by each municipality, makes up another. <clears throat> so where we are right now in the planning timeline, I mentioned the four years of planning that um, we've been working on in this initial planning phase. In 2023, right now we have the solutions and we have the the project concepts out. Um, and working with the municipalities to start getting input from municipal officials and elected officials. Next year is going to be a big year. We're going to be focusing on really refining those projects and working on financial impacts and sewer rate projections. And as I mentioned, I'll be asking if I can come back and share that with you, that, that detail for you. We also want to uh, next year really start some targeted public process. Um, so this meeting is great, but we'd like to do some public experience more out in the community so that we can get some feedback on these projects. The approval process will be in late 24 into 20. So refining the plan, it's a lot of work that still needs to be done to do that. Um, I mentioned the regional project concepts being refined now. Each municipality uh, refining any sewer rehab plans. And Shane, I don't know, I'm not here to speak about Emmaus, but if you have um, refinements you want to make, 
you still have a couple months yet to work on that. So, so that's great. We'll incorporate that. I mentioned the in, um, industry is being deeply involved in the treatment plant review. So that's really good. The collaboration with the municipalities on cost sharing and how we're going to fold that into rates, that's something that we're really just beginning to scratch the surface on now and beginning to, to put some concepts together and ship to you. So just a couple of key takeaways. We've been working at this since 2007 in one way, shape, or form. So it seems like a long time, I, and it is a long time. Um, I think what we've heard very clearly from DEP is that the time is now, it's no longer optional. The region does need to do this plan, and we do need to solve the problem. And I'm, I'm really pleased to say that we've been working really hard together on this. I also would encourage the communities um, to view this as an investment. Um, this is a single largest investment that we will make in protecting the environment um, in our careers. So it's an important investment and we'll pay dividends for decades to come for our future generations. Um, it's a lot of money, but it is really necessary. And then the last piece is just to uh, kind of get it, get out, out there with the public, understand the municipal officials who think it's not but also we get hearing from the public about what your concerns are about the projects, about the rates that we'll be talking about uh, early next year. We want to do this public input process now as the timeline will be um, to write the plan in the summer of next year. We get public input first, well, we know that the plan will actually incorporate that public um, I didn't. I don't have a slide on it, but I want to just comment on the the approval process, which will be coordinated as best that we can. Once we have the plan written, we have public comment. We write the plan. We will need to go out for um, for a public comment period, um, which is separate from public input. It's like a designated time period where we'll do public comment. We will also need each of the municipal planning commissions to review it and um, write a letter of recommendation. Um, and then we will need every municipality to um, pass a resolution adopting 15 of them. Trying to get that all to happen at the same time um, and get the support of each municipality together. That's what I'm trying to facilitate and really would love to have your input and uh, support along the way. That way, once we have all the communities um, kind of weighed in and have to do the process, we can get it to do And I think that's that's all I have for today. I went really, really fast through a lot of material, but um, you know, Shane, if you have anything you want to add to, to that, I know we've been working for close to this. Yeah, so first of all, uh, thank you, Liesl. I, I think it's important that uh, every municipality hears the same message because one of the things that we've gathered from our meetings is that they're not hearing the same message. So uh, this tour of all the municipalities, I know it's a lot of meetings and a lot of work, but I think it's necessary. I think it's necessary for this group to hear that message from from you. Um, yeah, so I've been, she said the last four years, I've been going to meetings at LCA for the last almost 12 years on the same matter. So this is this has been a long time coming, um, a lot of differences of opinion, a lot of political uh, issues, um, but I, I think we've really started to go in the right direction and the right path collectively. Uh, a lot more has gotten done since we threw the engineers out of the room and the consultants and started meeting as municipal managers uh, directly. Um, I, I think we started to really kind of forge a, a little bit of a better path. Um, I, I don't think... Uh, I don't think it's all said and done yet by any means. You've got an uphill climb here. Um, we have a lot of decisions to make as a borough council. Uh, our newly elected officials are in the room. Um, this is a good this is a good thing for them to hear because they will be the group uh, with four that are still remaining to to be going down this path next year. Uh, and so there's a lot to learn. I think collectively this group 
I've been in their ear for a long time. So so the the, the council members that remain are pretty well versed on this. Um, it's just going to be what direction we're advised by, you know, by our legal counsel and our engineers and obviously, you know, what we're working on uh, with you guys. But I, I will tell you that with LCA, it's definitely uh, improved as far as the relationship that we have and, and the guidance that the different consultants uh, that have been working with us, Raftelos has been great uh, to work with and, and so have some of the other consultants. So I feel, I feel like uh, when we first looked at this number, it was almost like $1.3 billion. Uh, and there are a lot of really wide eyes in the room. Uh, and so there's been a lot of engineering and a lot of redesign to get it to where it is right now. Um, and I think collectively uh, among the municipalities, we felt that uh, what we're looking at is the best option. Uh, I, I think that was a consensus. I can't say that's the vote, but I think that was a consensus in the room was among the, the engineers and among the staff that, that have looked at it, what they've engineered is probably the most cost effective. Unfortunately, it's still a bigger number than what I'd ever want to deal with, but it, it's it's still probably the most cost effective way uh, to increase that capacity so that we're not dumping sewage into the Lehigh River. So. I think you have questions. So, um, so in the beginning of your presentation, you used the word regionalization and uh, uh, we support regionalization uh, for the most part. And it's important because you become more efficient that way. But I think the most part, important part of this is the cost and how much everything's gonna cost each household. Uh, the numbers are scary, really scary. And uh, I think LCA has to start talking to our state representatives and our federal representatives now. Um, it's imperative that we get funding to reduce costs. If the LCA doesn't start now, and it ends up that we end up incurring, incurring all the costs, the only people that will be able to afford to live here will be people from New York and New Jersey. And uh, we don't want that. We want to remain our community. and. Uh, I just want to know what, I mean, with the uh, federal uh, infrastructure bill that was passed, I want to know what the LCA plans for seeking grant money and when. I, I love that question. Um, it's really an important question. And um, I don't have, uh, we don't have planned presentation time, but we do have a funding consultant here who's helping with some of this effort as well, Tori Morgan. Anyway. Um, so the, the question of grant funding was really critical. We do have an opportunity right now with the infrastructure funding that's out there to try to seek grants where we can. The timing is going to be challenging. So our plan will not be submitted to DEP five, and there is a deadline on the infrastructure uh, funding that's out there. So as aggressive as we can be to go after that particular pot of money, we absolutely will be. We also have, right now, we have some H2OPA grant applications out there. We're just waiting for the state to kind of figure out the budget and see where the grant awards are on those. We have a, a very um, strong network in Pennsylvania and with EPA. There's two kind of companion funding programs with PENDAS, State Revolving Fund, and a program at EPA called EPA, where they can do some grant borrowing. Financing programs. So those are just some of the things that we'll be looking at. We also want to be looking at um, some new things that are out there, uh, for example, like the Inflation Reduction Act, and whether there are some um, opportunities to receive that funding for the green type of projects that we have, whether we do some carbon footprint or uh, clearly these are environmental projects. So there, there might be some funding. Have you spoken to our federal representatives to see if there's a, a way of working around with the federal infrastructure bill that was passed? Um, so we have been working with the, uh, the state representatives at this point just to kind of make sure they're aware of this um, plan. We've, we've met with um, most, not all, but they're, they're scheduled. So we, we have that outreach going on. Representative Susan Wild, as well, is very well aware of what's going on with this project. Plan. So yeah, we're, we're kind of taking this broad 
shotgun approach to attack or to address and do outreach with, with every elected official that is willing to and provide some additional support. Right, because I, 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 I feel that's the only way that we can survive it if we get funding from federal and state because the numbers by themselves, if we don't get any help, I don't think most municipalities can afford it. They're, they are significant. I think for our borough, I believe it was 40, no, we, $40 million or something. If you just took the, the 5% or whatever it was. Um, yeah. And again, I, I think one of the challenges is why she can't show us numbers yet. Uh, and, and, and one of her biggest challenges is going to be how is this going to be broken down among the municipalities? And that's where the political football comes into play with this thing. Um, I've already shared my opinion with you. Uh, I've shared my opinion very publicly with, with the folks in the LCA room. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's how it's going to happen. Um, so I, I think that's why, you know, she can't sit here and say, you know, that Emmaus is going to have to pay 40 million or 200 million uh, out of the number. Um, because we just don't know yet. Yeah, that, that's a great point, Shane. Um, and the, the other thing I do want to comment on is that for the bulk of the, except for the, except for the work that Emmaus is going to do specifically, you're going to fund those projects you know, as a borough. Um, and you can go after small system grants or other opportunities to fund the projects specifically for the borough. But for the bulk of the projects that are regional projects, LCA is going to fund those. So in, in terms of finding the borrowing, finding grants, um, working collectively on, you know, papering Harrisburg with letters of support. So we, kind we of just get the bill of it. But we'll, yeah, then we pass that through, whether it's through a debt service calculation or something like that. So we would not be anticipating asking for a cash, you know, large cash donation. But we can talk about different ways of doing that. There's things that the world wants to talk about. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Shane, would you mind commenting on what the borough, what we are, plans are? One of our projects to do. I am up for I Yes. Yeah, so there's there's a couple projects. Um, first of all, uh, it's been suggested by uh, one of the consultants that we need, we should probably look at building a parallel, uh, a short parallel interceptor. Um, and so that's in consideration. Um, but our biggest part is on the west end of town. That's our biggest contributor of uh, raw uh, rainwater into the sewer system. And so we have uh, $4 million we're working on getting funded through PennVest right now. Um, we're in the process of doing the engineer work. Uh, to get that stormwater separation out. Uh, some of it may be grand, some of it may be loan, um, but we have to concentrate on the west end of town. We were going to do all lining, but it's very clear that in the peak of the storm on the west side, we, we have to concentrate on manholes first. Uh, manholes won't take the four, full four million, but um, we're definitely seeing a, a large increase of water during the peak of a, a storm out there. So we, we've got to make sure that we have those sealed up the right way. Uh, so that'll be that'll be the biggest step. Um, <clears throat> we'll either have the application. So, so PennVest has come back to us and said, you have to fully engineer the project, which is almost like a waste of money to me because you don't need to fully engineer lining pipes, right? We have we have the work, uh, we have the camera work, we have it listed, the, the, literally shoot the lining through in the spots where you you just you have it but they're requiring fully engineered plans so that is holding up that process by probably four to five months um so penvest only meets quarterly uh we're going to do our best to try to get it in for the february meeting if not it's going to be in their spring meeting to have the application in but in order for us to get uh any kind of loan through penvest uh, mm -hmm. or funding you have to have the full engineered plans. Now, let me be very clear. Why PennVest? Because the loan rate is 2.5%, not 5.5%. And when you take that times $4.5 million or $4 million, it's a very big difference. Uh, so they're still holding their loan rates at 2.5%. So that's, even though there's a thousand piles of paper you have to go through and it's a, it's a pain in the backside, uh, it's definitely worth the effort when the interest rates are so different between PennVest and, and private funding. Thank you, Shane. Anyone else? So, so the, the theory behind this one, 
they're going to be high, so we're not going to get the 165 gallons that are going. What are you going to find? So if there he is, we're going to fix the 50 to 100 year old, bring that down to whatever, 60 million, whatever, build infrastructure with high enough capacity to accept that. Correct? Yeah. So what's the realistic number that should be going What on a heavy rain day? Well, depends on who you ask. I mean, he, he would say, no rain, it's not a stormwater system, no rainwater. That's should impossible. Be That's yeah, they, 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 hold, they hold the line on that, man. That's they, they're, they, they argue that. Yeah, that's like, I mean, like they right. punch us in the face with that every time they have a conversation. It, it is unrealistic. And so um, I, I would hesitate at this point because the engineering is still underway, um, but we are not currently designing for 160. Okay, We're that's... designing for something less because we do think that the municipal systems have shown um, a great deal of commitment to getting the, the flows down. And um, we have that checkpoint that's um, a baked schedule to see how we're doing and see what the next phase of the project needs to be. If we've all done a really great job and the, the, we, we hit our targets in terms of flow reduction, that will help them. So at the end of the day, even if we don't get it to zero, as long as we clean the two, they can handle it. That's they're not expecting us to get to zero, even though they think that's possible. Correct. Okay. Yeah, there, there's a there's a sense of research sure. there. Well, DEP might say a lot of stormwater system, no rainwater should go in there. They know that that will happen. That, that's just human beings constructed just to happen. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, what's the life expectancy of plant houses? So um, the facilities that we're planning for Pines Island are pumps and valves and mechanical things, which typically have a 30-ish year lifespan. So um, even if we're just replacing, we built it to the right size, um, and we're just replacing in kind the things that we can, we're looking at needing to reinvest everything. Um, but we're this is a plant that was built in like so we're replacing things now for the second. That's that's ongoing. Um, in terms of the capacity, though, to get it right, it's time to build new. We're in the future, but we have to see successfully. Does that does that answer your question? No, uh, kind of. I mean, I'm I'm only. It's not a really that's probably with the valley growing up the rate is growing like that. Yeah, no, that that thank you for that for clarifying that question. So I mentioned that each of the municipalities is um, has already submitted growth projections um, and our plan goes through 25, but the growth projections that were provided were through the year 20. So uh, for something like the size of a pipe, which you hope will last 100 years, we're sizing it to the largest size. Some of the other, um, we'll call them the other pieces, of tanks or pumps um, that we can add to, we're sizing. The question, Charlie. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, Lisa. You can check the uh, email off here. 15, list of 15. And um, I'll coordinate, continue to coordinate with Shane about uh, the next steps and when is the right time for for the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have reading on the minutes. We have the November 6th council meeting minutes. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve those minutes? Councilwoman McManaman, seconded by. Councilman Dufresne, any corrections or additions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. We have no decisions on bids. Uh, we have three communications. Faith Presbyterian requested the use of the triangle December 24th for their Christmas Eve uh, service that they've been doing for many years. Uh, we'll send that to staff. It's a recurring event. Uh, we received a letter of appreciation from of for the EMS, EMS staff um, 
received a letter from Stacy Foley praising our EMS staff for saving her brother's life. She thanked Ryan, Harry, Sean, and Zach. I apologize she didn't leave last names, but she also mentioned the brother is doing amazing, quote unquote. So uh, it's very nice to hear when we have success stories like that. We also received a letter from the Monkey Knife Fight 2024 event request. That's a recurring right. event, and we'll send that to staff also. Did anybody else have a letter of communication to bring forward? All right, hearing none, there's no borough engineer's report, solicitor's report. Uh, briefly, I did receive communication from the East Penn School District with respect to the crossing guards agreement that we've been working on. Uh, we can, uh, it's obviously an item we're still continuing to work for. They have pushed back with respect to our intention of just doing a flat rate. They have instead asked that we provide compensation with respect to hourly amounts. You will see that in, uh, that'll be forwarded to you shortly. I only received that today, but uh, Mr. Pepe and uh, Ms. Jared Eaton were copied on that. They've received it. Okay, yeah. so yeah. we will have to discuss that further because obviously that is not what council had intended. So has, has everyone has everyone received that today? Yes. yes. Did you all have it? I didn't get it. Okay. All right, because I, I I received it this afternoon. So yeah, and yeah. he literally sent it to us at one thirty today. So yeah, I have it. Uh, Jason. So this is un under unfinished business part one. So are we re having our reading tonight? You are. Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't so know it has not, you were saying. This, I didn't know. this agreement simply. I'm prepared to read it. That's the, the agreement simply addresses the compensation structure. They're still assuming the responsibility. Right. And that they've already agreed to that. So okay. this is simply how we would donate money to them to it's address next, this. It's next on the agenda. So. Yep. Well, that that was why I debated whether to bring this up in the solicitor's report, but wait, but figured, you know, let's dive on the grenade first. Segway. Yeah. Progress? Progress. All right. Thank you. That leads us to unfinished business. Part. Why don't we have ordinance 1251, an ordinance of the Borough of Emmaus, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, allowing the East Penn School District to assume hiring and oversight of school crossing guards. Um, like, would somebody like to make a motion to approve ordinance 1250? Councilman Dufresne, seconded by Councilwoman McManaman. All right, discussion. So I just want to make sure, again, have the email. It came late this afternoon. I didn't read. There are two separate issues. Mm -hmm. Correct. I got it. So the ordinance Completely is setting up that they will be responsible yep. for crossing right. guards and what intersections and that they can be no. changed no. with no. agreement. No, 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 no. What? It doesn't, it doesn't identify intersections. The ordinance solely. I stand correct. Yeah, the ordinance so totally addresses that they are assuming that responsibility. And as of now, they're doing that without any potential donation from us. So they've accepted this. They've already said. No they science. have already completed their no portion science. of it. It, remember, so what that law said was if they send you a resolution requesting that they take it over, your only job there is if you want to allow them to do it, you pass an ordinance. That's where your commitment by law ends. ends. Yep. Okay. All right. So with that said, anybody else have any questions or comments on this? The roll call. Oh. Yeah, so the motion is a second. Roll call vote. Councilwoman McManaman? Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner? Aye. Councilman Anders? Aye. Councilman Valiot? Aye. Councilman Hart? Aye. Councilman Dufresne? Aye. Councilman Lehberg? Aye. Um, ordinance 1251 passes on first reading. Second reading will be. No, uh, this was second. That was second reading. Yeah. Oh, this was second reading. Yep. My apologies. So ordinance 1251 passes on second reading. Under new business, we have Ordinance 1252, amending zoning ordinance. Now, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to table Ordinance 1252. Second. There's a motion by Councilman Bowyer, seconded by Councilman Hart. My only question on that is, uh, Mr. Solicitor, is did we not have it tabled already? No, this is the official vote to table it. Okay, thank you. You tabled it a, a month ago. Or, so you're or just reauthorizing it then? Okay, because I thought we did table. I actually did not remember that. Thank you, Shane. 
Not me. You you, you do. <laughs> Remember you, the table was all three of them together. Oh, okay. Yeah, it might be. It might actually might be wise to table all three. I together. would not. Oh, you don't. I think to. you can adopt the official map without. I I I, I see no reason at all to delay adoption of the official map. That has nothing to do with the zoning. It has nothing to do with the sourdough. I do think you can proceed with the official map piece. Uh, the other two, I think it's a different, it's a whole different discussion. You concur, Mr. Solicitor? He should, because the official map has nothing to do with the zoning piece at all. He is correct that that is true, but... It, it... And there's been there's been no discussion on the official map or any amendments in six months. Just so you're aware. No. All right. So we have a motion to table. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Ordinance 1252 is tabled. We have Ordinance 1253 amending Esaldo. Mr. President, I'd like to place a motion to table Ordinance 12. Second. There's a motion by Councilman Valley, seconded by Councilman Andrews. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Ordinance 1253 is tabled. Uh, Ordinance 1254, an ordinance of the Borough of Emmaus, Lehigh, Pennsylvania, amending the municipal code of ordinances of the Borough of Emmaus to create a new chapter entitled Official Map, establishing and adopting an official map of the whole Borough of Emmaus pursuant to the municipality's planning code of the Commonwealth. Would somebody like to make a motion? to approve Ordinance 1254. I'll, I'll so Councilman Andrews, is there a second to approve Ordinance 1254? Okay. Councilwoman Baumgartner? No, Terry. Councilwoman McManaman? I, I heard it come from over there. I, I wasn't looking. Um, all right, so discussion. So, Mr. Solicitor, if this were to pass, what would it take in the future to reduce? Would this be a long, drawn out process? So, we actually took a look at this over the week, or uh, we took a look, I took a look at this over the weekend. I don't know if that was shared with everybody. The map would be treated exactly the same as the zoning ordinance under uh, 11607 and 608. There hasn't been, and Shane is correct, your borough manager is correct, there has not been any public comment on this. So, this is simply rearranging the map. That said, without a new zoning ordinance, we may... This isn't the zoning map. This is just the official this map? This is the official map. Oh. This is not the zoning map. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying is okay, that's, this has I, no bearing on, on, on any understand. of the concerns that you guys have been talking about. This is the, we identified the bike trails. We identified the, all the, all the pretty stuff that's and on the, the map. multi right? and all that. Yeah, that's, that's what this, that's and what this, this ordinance is, is. This is perfectly fine for passing. It doesn't actually change any zoning. Nothing. Functions. All right. Yeah, with nothing. that explained, does anyone else have any other comments? Councilwoman Bond Thorgan. In the ordinance that's attached, there are some comments and highlights and things. I'm just wondering if in that result. The way that it's written is, <clears throat> it is the way that it, it is. I, I don't know why they, you have a red line version of it. Yeah, this is not what we reviewed. This is, I, I'm not certain how this got on your iPads. I see. No, I'm looking at it now, but it's not the one that is. But the way that is written through that ordinance without the comments is the way that it was settled. Okay. There's no. No. Okay. So and again, this is the comments. Yeah. And again, this is simply the the official map. I, I, when I, when I, Shane was mentioning this before, I was concerned we were talking about the zoning map. We, we couldn't adopt that, but this is ready to go. Okay. Just Any more comments? One more follow up to that. If you look at A3, there's a highlight, something highlighted there. That's not quite going to be. I do. The, you're talking about the highlighted section of the box. I, I, I don't know. I didn't upload this, so I. I can be. I actually think it probably doesn't belong there. It's the yeah, that's for the purpose of the, I believe that yeah, how it reads. Deleted. 
Was this the one we got back from Michael Baker? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why I said I'd like you to move forward with the rest of the changes. I know. Okay. All right. Are there any other comments on Ordinance 1254? It's a roll call vote. Councilwoman McManaman. Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner. Aye. Councilman Anders. Aye. Councilman Balliot. Aye. Councilman Hart. Aye. Councilman Defring. Aye. Councilman Ladenburg. Aye. Ordinance 1254 passes on first reading. Second reading will be second meeting in, in uh, December. No, first meeting. Um, no, second, second meeting in December. Second meeting in December. All right, unfinished business part two. We have nothing. Does anybody have anything to bring forward that is not on the agenda? So, Shane, this is where I would bring that forward from budget and finance at the end of the year. Correct, yes. Yep. So, at our last budget and finance meeting, should we go back? Yeah, just, yeah. The, okay. last, the last budget and finance committee meeting that we had, the committee <laughs> recommended to bring the borough council on the recommendation to move 850000 dollars from our general fund to our roads tax fund and the purpose of that is in our minutes um it's the extra funds from the building projects that we did we talked about this for multiple years now but any excess funds we're going to put towards roads funds uh, even with moving eight hundred fifty thousand to the roads fund tax it would still be about a half a million dollars of potential money in there that should be at an unexpected bill or something there's still plenty of funds to do it. So I'd like to add that to the agenda here for us to have a So there's a motion to first add it to yes. um to amend the uh, agenda. Amend the agenda. Councilman Hart or second uh, first by uh Councilman Dufresne, second by Councilman Hart. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. So that's added to the agenda. Now you want to make a motion? No, let's we'll put it under budget finance. Okay. All right, we'll address that, it. That way you can just go right through. Uh, he's the chairman of budget and finance. We'll address it under that committee. All right, Mayor's report. Thank you. Um, no Shave November has started. It's November and December again this year. And we are also partnering with the Historical Society. Thanks to Councilwoman McManaman. They will be collecting scarves and gloves at the December 1st and 2nd events that they're having. And and we will, okay, and we will be um, handing those out to individuals in need as well. Other than that, progress. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Committee reports we have Public Works Committee, Chairman Anders. Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing for official action this evening. Um, we did meet on November 15th. Um, one note that we are still, I believe, Shane, accepting applications for the Public Works positions. We have two available. Um, we will be conducting interviews later in December. Um, besides that, our meeting notes are there. Our next meeting is December 20th at 4 p.m. With that, I'll report progress. Thank you, Health, Sanitation, and Codes Committee. Chairman Valley. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, tonight, there's a few things on our agenda. Uh, the first one's going to be a request for the yeah. escrow. Um, the property located at 1267 Elman Street. I uh, have questions of that. For a manager, and that would be specifically on some things. We would have a letter from our engineer stating this is okay. I don't see that. So, uh, so our coach department uh, has done the final review of everything that he's had. Yeah. So, um, I feel very good about this. I, I don't think we need to pay the engineer yet another time for the very few things that he had to do. The coach department's very much qualified to make those determinations. So, he did the landscaping, he did the roadway construction, he did the paving. Um, the fencing is not a public uh, a public issue. The neighbor is, just, again, debating with him about where the fence should go. To me, that is not our problem at the end of the day. That is a neighbor dispute. The public improvements have been completed to our satisfaction, though. So we're with, we're, you know, we, he's asking for the thousands of dollars that are still in escrow. Um, to be released because he has met all of our requirements in the last review. I'd like to place that in a form of a motion. I will place that in a form of a motion, and the motion I guess would be that to release the escrow. Normally, we have an amount. Uh, no, we're we're we we're, we're, we're uh, suggesting full release. He's completed with his project. Perfect. Well, then I'll make the 
So I'm going to motion to perform the motion by Councilman Valley, a seconded by Councilwoman McManaman. Any more questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Um, next is very similar. This is seven gen. Question about the lease letter. Uh, for their app. Place that in the form of motion as well. Motion by Councilman Balliot, second by Councilwoman McManaman. Any more questions or discussion? All so, so in this time. case, we do have a recommendation from the engineer. It's not in here, though, but he did he did recommend the release. Any more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Uh, our next meeting will be November twenty ninth, four fifty five, and that'll report progress. Thank you, Park and Recreation Committee Chairwoman Bob Gardner. Thank you, Mr. President. We have nothing for official action this evening. We met November 13th and 15th. Meeting minutes are attached, and our next meeting will be December 5th. I report part. Thank you. Public Safety Committee Chairman Hartman. Nothing from public safety this month. Uh, we did not. Next scheduled meeting is November 30th at 9 a.m. <coughs> Thank you. General Administration Committee is myself. We have our next meeting December 7th at 9 a.m. Progress, Budget and Finance Committee, Chairman DeFriend. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> we have resolution 2023-30. Uh, it's a bill list resolved by Borough Council to authorize payment of the November 20th, 2023 bill list as follows. Bill list $479,538.85. Payroll number 23. $182,760.35, payroll taxes $62,611.04, for a total of $724,910.24 on this 20th, November 2023. Motion by Councilman Dufresne, is there a second? Councilman Balliot, any questions on the bill list? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven eyes. Okay. In the packet, you can see the significant revenue expenses for the first half of November. And then uh, basically, we just added to the agenda tonight. You go into the meeting minutes uh, and you go to about the middle of page two. Uh, you'll see where we recommended to bring to council that $850,000 be forwarded transfer party from the general fund to the Road special road fund uh, due to the extra money that's left over. It's not extra money due to the money that we didn't use from the funding on the uh, three projects, uh, remodel projects here. So we're so I'm putting the form motion to move eight hundred fifty thousand from the general funds to the special road fund from, from the capital from the capital, capital. fund okay. from the capital fund to the special road fund. Motion by Councilman Dufresne, second by Councilman Hart. Uh, I'll just note that um, from the uh, bond, we are required to spend that money so on capital projects. So the council decided to put it towards growth, which qualifies as a capital project. So just want to state that. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. And then you can see the rest of the. Uh, meeting minutes in there. There was actually a whole lot talked about in there. Progress. Thank you. Community Relations Planning and Development Committee Chairwoman McMinnon. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing for official action this evening. Our next meeting is Monday, November 27th at 4.30 p.m. via Zoom. One will be reviewing and discussing the uh, mass historical action. Very exciting. With that, I report progress. Thank you. Under boards and commission, you have the pension board meeting notes, uh, which leads us to personal appeals part two. Does anybody in the audience have a personal appeal? Nobody on Zoom. So we will go to Pearl Manager's report. Um, nah, so your next budget workshop was scheduled. We were going to have that the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Uh, at the Budget of Finance Committee meeting uh, the other day, uh, we realized there's probably two or three council members that cannot make the Tuesday meeting. 
and we don't feel that we need more than one night uh, to finish up the budget. So what we'll do is we'll have that final budget workshop the Thursday after Thanksgiving instead. So that'll be November 30th instead of the 28th. So we will not have a budget workshop on the 28th. We'll have it on the 30th instead. Um, so uh, four o'clock on the 30th, it's already been, you know, it's already advertised, but that's when we'll wrap it up. I'm going to send the proposed fee schedule out to you guys in the next day or two. Um, there's a lot of red lines to it, but that'll give you a week or a week or so or two to look through it, start asking questions because that'll be a major topic of your conversation in that budget workshop, I'm sure. Um, also read the budget and finance committee notes because they made a couple uh, changes uh, or recommendations. Yeah, well, I was gonna say a couple of changes that they're recommending to you um, for the budget to uh, to consider at that budget workshop. So that'll also be part of your discussion on, on the 30th. And we're also gonna get updated numbers from Seeing on the IT on the 30th Correct. to make sure yep. everything's fine. Correct. So budget workshop on the 30th instead of the 28th. Uh, that'll be uh uh I don't expect it to take more than probably two hours. Um just depends on how, how much discussion there is on the on the fee schedule, I think. So I mean it could be as short as an hour, it depends. It could be. Um if you have questions on on the fee schedule, because there's like I said, there's a lot of red in it. Um so it might be difficult to kind of read through. Feel free to send me an email, ask questions, come see me, and we'll we'll go through it with you. Uh, so that way you you know what you're looking at for the 30th when you, when you discuss it. So Ken, I have one recommendation. I know what budget and finance they were on at the committee meeting, and I know we've said that department heads don't have to come to this if they don't want to. I really do think it helped me tremendously to have the two of them there and chat out of perspective too, because he's been involved, you know, in a lot of SCA one, but. I think would help the others to have them. Those maybe yeah, 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 that's who he, that's who he was referring to. Uh, yeah, he was referring to Sony. Yeah, he was, I, yeah, he was I, Sony. I, I, yeah I, I think it would be a good idea because they they can explain they can explain uh, most of what you'll see in the fee schedule changes are are zoning. Let me rephrase that. Um, there's, like, there's not a lot of major change. There's a lot of changes that it's easier to hear from them. Why yeah. they suggest changes slash updates. Correct. Yep. The other thing I want to do is I, I want to change the way that whole thing looks too, so it's easier to read. Uh, I think it's it's so many years of just adding in lines and and it's it's it doesn't flow very well Make anymore. It more so organized. I think once you guys kind of decide on what the fee will fees will look like, I'm going to change the way the resolution looks, so it's it's a little bit easier to flow. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Our report progress. Well, I just have a question that I thought of tonight, and it's if you if you can answer it, that's fine. But Turkey Hill, do we have any updates on where that's going at this point? Timelines? Oh yeah. Um, I just I, curious. I, I know people in the so, community. Care. So, so what I, what I can tell you is this: they've reached out to us. Uh, we've informed them that their permit expires in January. Um, they have informed us that they plan to continue construction in the spring. Uh, that's as much as I can say right now. They do. You know, the latest word we heard is they, they want to continue construction in the spring. Um, that's that's as much as I can tell you. That, that's fine. I mean, it's it's something. Yeah, yeah just something. let it at that. Yeah, yeah no, that's if fine. You, right. Is that, if you believe that's why I said as much as I can tell you at this point. <laughs> All right. Uh, the progress of the borough manager. Uh, I only have under president's business to say go Eagles, and then uh, <laughs> there's no executive session. So motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Councilman Balliot, second by Councilman Dufresne. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Meeting adjourned at seven twenty nine. Go Eagles.